New York City, it's theCUBE. Covering CyberConnect 2017. Brought to you by Centrify and the Institute for Critical Infrastructure Technologies. Hey, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE's live coverage in New York City. This is the CyberConnect 2017 presented by Centrify, underwritten by Centrify's industry event. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Byron Akohito, who's the journalist at lastwatchdog.com. Uh, thanks for joining us. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, pleasure to be here. So, seasoned journalist, there's a lot to report. Uh, Cyber is great, we heard a great talk this morning around the national, national issues around the government, but businesses are also struggling too. That seems to be the theme of this event. It's an inaugural event. Uh, it really is a, a terrific topic that touches everything that we're doing, the way we live our lives today. So yeah, this is a terrific event where some of the smartest minds dealing with it come together to talk about What's the top issues. level story in your mind in this industry right now? Chaos, is it you know, uh, data, civil liberties, common threats? What's, how do you stack rank the level of importance, the most important story? You know, it, it really is all of the above. I had the uh, privilege to uh, have sit at lunch with uh, General Keith Alexander. I've, I've seen him speak before at different security events, but uh, so it's a small group of the keynote speakers and, and uh, Tom Kemp, the CEO of Centrify. And uh, he just like nailed it. He basically, what resonated with me was he said basically we're kind of like where we were, where the world was at the start of World War I, where uh, you know, the Russia and Germany and England, you know, were all kind of lining up and Serbia was in the middle and nobody really knew the significance of what lay ahead and the U.S. was on the sidelines and all these things were just going to converge and create this huge chaos. Well, he, he, that's what he compared it today except we're in the digital space with that, you know, because we're moving into uh, cloud computing, mobile devices, destruction of privacy, and then now all the nation states, Russia is lining up, North Korea and Iran. We are doing it too. That was part of one of the most interesting things that uh, yeah. his he rhetoric mentioned. was very high on the "Hey, get our act together" country attitude. Like we got a lot to bring to the table. He highlighted a couple use cases and some war stories that the NSA has been involved in, but almost kind of teasing out like we're kind of getting in our own way if we don't reimagine this. Yes, he he is a gr very great advocate for uh, the private sector, uh, industry, but not just industry. The different major verticals like the especially the financial sector and the energy sector, yeah. to put aside some of the competitive urges they have yeah. and recognize that this is going on. Okay, but I got to ask you, as sure. a journalist, last watchdog, uh, General Alexander definitely came down when he sort of addressed privacy and Snowden and the whole story he told about the gentleman from the ACLU who came in a skeptic and left an advocate. As a journalist, whose job is be a skeptic, did you buy that? Um, does your community buy that? Uh, what, what's the counterpoint to that narrative that we heard this morning? Well, actually, I think you hit it right on the head. And as a journalist, you know, why I got into this business and I'm still doing it after all these years is I just, if I can do a little bit to shed a little bit of light on something that helps the public uh, recognize what's going on, that's what I'm here to do. And, and, and this topic is just so rich and touches everything and it, you know, we, talked about, we were talking just about the nation state level of it, but really it Societal. connects down to the, what we're doing as a society, what Google and Facebook and Twitter has, how they're shaping our society and how that impacts yeah. uh, And we were talking privacy. last night, Dave, about the Twitter alphabet and Google, I mean, Twitter um, uh, and Facebook and alphabet in front of the Senate hearings last week. And right. um, how what it means, in terms, he brought it up today, the common um, protection of America in this time, you know, given the past election, obviously that was the context of the Google thing, really has got a whole opportunity to reimagine how we work as a society in America, but also on the global stage. You got China, Russia, and the big actors. So it's interesting, can we eventually reimagine, use this opportunity as the greatest crisis to transform the, the crap that's out there today? Divisiveness, no trust. And we're living in an era now where, I mean, in my lifetime, I can honestly say, I've never seen it this shitty before. I mean, it's bad. I mean, it's like the younger generation looking at, at us, looking at, oh, Trump this, Trump that. I don't trust anybody. And the government has okay. an opportunity. All right, but wait a minute. So I'm, 
I'm not, I mean, I, I, I'm down the middle, as you know, but I gotta, I'm gonna play skeptic here a little bit. What I basically heard from General Alexander this morning was, we got vetted by the ACLU, and they threw sort of holy water on it, but, and, and we followed the law, and I believe everything he said, but I didn't know about that law until Snowden went public, and I agree with you, Snowden should be in jail. I didn't say that. But you did. You <laughs> said that a couple cube, two years ago in the cube, you said that. Anyway, regardless. I don't maybe, think, it, maybe I'm, I'm going to go find the, the Maybe archive. I'm rewriting history. But that, the, but those laws were, were enacted kind of in a clandestine manner. So I, I, I put it out to both of you guys. I mean, as a citizen, are you willing to say, okay, I'll give up maybe some of my privacy rights for protection? Well, I know where I stand on that, but I'm just asking you guys. I mean, do all your readers sort of agree with that narrative? Do all, do all the Well, cube? I mean, if you look at the World War One example that generally brought up in lunch, I think it wasn't there, but just me thinking about that is, brings up a good perspective. If you look at reinventing how society in America is done, what will you give up for safety? These are some of the questions, and what does patriotism mean for if industry's going to work together, what does it mean to be a patriot? What I heard from the general on stage today was, we're screwed if we don't figure this out, because the war, it's coming. Yeah. It's happening at massive speeds. Again, I so, know where I stand you know, on this. I'm a law-abiding citizen, go ahead and, Byron, what and do you think? snoop me. But, but there, I know people who would say, no, that's, that's, that's the, you know, violating my constitutional rights. I don't know, I mean, well, yeah, it's, it's worth a, a debate is all I'm saying. It's a, it's, a, it's a core question to how we're living our lives today, especially here in the U.S. With, in terms of privacy, uh, I think the horse has left the barn. Nobody cares about privacy uh, if you just look at the way we live our lives, right? Yeah. Google <laughs> and Facebook have basically <laughs> thrown the privacy model that G GPS that came ab came about because we went through World War One and World War Two, and, and we wanted the right to be left alone and not have, yeah. you know, authoritative forces following us inside the door. But now we, we don't live in just the physical space. We live in the. We live I in think the there's cyber new rules. Space. I mean, you're. I mean. You so there is no privacy. Don't try to basically. paint me into a corner here. I did maybe say some comments, but my, looking forward, the new realities are, there are realities happening, and I think the general illuminated a lot of those today. I've been feeling that. However, I think when you define what it means to be a patriot of the United States of America and freedom, that freedom has to be looked through the prism of the new realities. And the new realities are, as the general illuminated, there are now open, open public domain tools for anyone to attack the United States. Industry and government, and he brought it up. Who do they protect? the banks, so this ends up, I think, will be a generational thing that the younger generation and others will have to figure out, but the leaders in industry will have to step up, and I think that, to me, is interesting. What does that look like? I think, I think leadership is, is the whole key to this, because I think, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a big thread about where the burden lies. I write about that a lot as a central theme. Where is the burden? Well, each of us have a burden in this society to pay attention to our digital footprint, but it's moving and whirling so fast, and you know the the speaker just now from U.S. Bank said uh, there is no such thing as un unprecedented. It's all ridiculous the way things are happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so it has to be at the level of the leaders, the a combination, and I think this is what the general is advocating: a combination of the government, as we know it, as we've built it, by and for the people, and industry, recognizing that. If they don't do it, regulation is going to be pushed down, which is already happening here in New York. New York, New York State Department of Financial Services now imposes rules on financial services companies to protect their data, have a CISO, check their third parties. That just went in effect so you, in this March. This is a good point. Let's let's unpack that because I think that's a what's new. If they don't do this, they don't partner. If governments and industry don't partner together, either collectively as a you know vertical or sector with the government, then the government will impose new mandates on them, right? That's well, kind of what you're getting what's, at. It'll, be, what's a, it'll be a push and shove. So yeah. now the push is because the industry has not acted with enough urgency yeah. and, and, you know, even though that we're seeing them in the headlines, you know, I mean, <laughs> the states have already, California has already led the way in terms of this data loss disclosure law that now 47 states have, but it's a very, I mean, that's yeah. just, the level that government can yeah. push and then industry I mean, has to I gotta to say, that. I mean, I'm just being an observer in the industry, we do the cube, but how many events will we hear the word digital transformation? I mean, if people think digital transformation is hard now, imagine if the government <laughs> imposes all these restrictions. Well, but what about, I mean, what about GDPR, right? How does that affect? That's a good question, yeah. You, know, it, tell, it you tell me the U.S. government affect. is going to be obliged to delete private information because because of a socialist agenda, which GDPR's been called, again? I'm, well, know. no, that's another one of, the, one, one of these 
catalysts or these, you know, one yeah. of these drivers that are pushing, because if Google, all these, yeah. it's a, we're in a global society, right? Okay, so, here's my take, I'll yeah. share my opinion on this, Dave. I brought it up earlier. The, what General was pointing, pointing out is now that the terror states now have democratized tools that other big actors are democratizing through the public domain to allow any enemy of the United States to attack with zero consequences because they're either anonymous, but let's just say they're not anonymous. Let's just say they get caught. We, we, we can barely convert drug dealers, multiple jurisdictions in court in the, in the world. What court is out there that will actually solve the problem? So the question is, if they get caught, what is the, what is the judicial process? Navy SEALs? I mean, obviously, <laughs> I'm, I'm using the DEA and drug, when we've well, been fighting drug for multiple generations and we still have to have a process to multiple years to get that in a, in a global court. I mean, it's yeah, hard. My point is, if we can't even figure out for a drug trade, generations of data, how fast are we going to get cyber, cyber criminals? criminals? Well, there is recognition of this and, and there is work being done, but the gap is so large. Microsoft has done a uh, big chunk of this in fighting botnets, right? So they've taken a whole legal strategy that, that they've managed to impose in maybe a half dozen cases the last few years where they've, where they've legally went and got legal power to shut down hosting services that were sources of these botnets. Mm -hmm. So that's just like one piece of it. So that's World War I analogy. Let's just take it to the cloud wars. So in a way, Dave, we asked Amazon early on, Amazon Web Services, how their security was. And you questioned, maybe cloud has better security than on-premise. At that time, eight years ago, oh my God, the cloud is so insecure. Now it looks like the cloud's more secure. So maybe it's a scale game. Cloud guys might actually be an answer if you take your point to the next level. What well, do you I think? Mean, you haven't, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but you haven't seen these kind of massive Equifax-like breaches at Amazon that we, and that Google, we know about. That we know about, well, but. I what do you think, they cloud have to, players have, have an opportunity? Well, well, that we Wouldn't know about. To, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But, but I'm not saying that. No, the, the, the question on the table, the question on the table is, but, are but, the cloud guys in a better position to, to walk around and carry the heavy stick on cyber? I, I, personally, I, say, I would say no question, there's homogeneity of the infrastructure and you know, uh, standardization and more automation and what do you think? machine what's learning. Your, well, what's your community I think, I think it's, Part, you're, I think you're right, first of all, but I think it's not the full answer. I think the, the, yeah. the full answer is what the general keeps hammering on, which is private, public, this needs to be leadership, we need to connect yeah. all these things where it makes sense to connect them yeah. and realize that there's a bigger thing on the horizon yeah. that's already you know, breathing down our necks, already blowing fire like a dragon at us. And, and, uh, it, it's, a, it's a community, it's a piece of, it's a yeah, community it's problem. Right, yeah. The community has to solve the problem at leadership level for companies and industry, but also what the security industry has always been known for is sharing, right? The, the question yeah. is, can they get to a data sharing uh, protocol it's, of some yeah, sort? What it's about more than just data sharing. I mean, he talked about that. He talked about yeah. the, the, at lunch he did, at, at, about the, uh, the ISAC sharing. He said, no, it's more, ISACs are these yeah. informational sharing by industry, by financial industry, health industry, energy industry, they share information about how they've been hacked. But he said it's more than that. We have to get together at the table yeah. and you know, recognize where these attacks are coming and do the, figure out what the smart things are doing, like at the ISP level. You know, so where, if the ISPs are, that's a big part of the fun, I mean, a yeah. crucial part of the funnel is where yeah. the traffic moves, you know, that's where it needs to be done. What about the, what about the balance of power in, in cyber war, cyber warfare? I mean, U.S. obviously, U.S. military, industrial complex, you know, Russia, China, okay, we know what the balance of power is there. Is there much more of a level playing field in, in cyber warfare, fair, do you think? Or is it sort of mirror the size of the economy or the sophistication of the technology, or is... No, I think you're absolutely right. There is much more of a level playing right. field. I mean, a North Korea can come in and, and do a, this is what we know about, or we think we know about, come in and do like a WannaCry attack, develop a ransomware that actually moves on the Internet of Things to raise cash, right, for, uh, for North Korea. Right, so there, yeah, you're absolutely right. That's there fun is, in their defense is, department. So that, 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 as Robert Gates said when he was on theCUBE, we have, we have to be really careful with how much we go in the offense with cybersecurity because we have more to lose than anybody with critical infrastructure and the banking system, the electrical grid, nuclear. Well, I interviewed a cyber guy on theCUBE in the studio from Vidder and um, uh, Junaid Islam. He's like, yeah, we, can, we can look at geo and not have anyone outside the U.S. access our grid. 
I mean, no one should attack our resources from outside the U.S. to start with. So core network access has been a big problem. Yeah, here's, so. here's something, uh, I, I think I can share this, because I think you said it, you wouldn't mind me sharing it. At lunch today, with, to, your, to your point that we have more to lose is, uh, you know, the general said, yeah, we have terrific offensive capability. We, just like in, in, the, in the analog world, we have all the great bombers, more bombers than anybody else, but we, can we stop people from getting, we don't have the comparable the level defense of stopping. The defense, right. Um, same thing with cyber. He, he said somebody once asked him, uh, how many of your, uh, 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 what percentage of your offensive attacks are successful? 100%. You know, yeah, we do have, and we've, we've, we saw some of that with yeah. leaks of the NSA's weapons that happened this yeah. year, that gone out. It's like Swiss cheese, the leaks are everywhere. Yeah. And this, but at the network issue, I, was, I, I interviewed a guy who was running one of the big ports, I won't say the city to reveal who it was, but he's like, oh my God, these guys have come in maritime network accessing the core internet, unvetted. Pure core access, his first job as CIO was, shut down the core network. Mm -hmm. you know, sure. So he has to put a VPN out there and segment the network and validate all the traffic coming through, but the other predecessor, predecessor had direct internet access mm -hmm. to their core network. Yeah, the, I think the energy sector and, and uh, you know, there's a sponsor here, ICIT, that's in the industrial control space that I think that's where a lot of attention is going to go in the next couple of years because mm -hmm. as we saw with these uh, attacks on the Ukraine, shutting down, you know, the getting in there and shutting down their power grid for half a day or whatever, or with our own legend, mm -hmm. US own involvement in something like Stuxnet where we get into the power grid in Iran, uh, those controls are over here with a separate legacy. If once you get in, it's really easy to maneuver around. I think, yeah. you know, the that perimeter needs to be model. all cleaned up and locked down. Um, that's part of the They're defense. already in there. The malware's sitting in there. It's oh, we're already over there, probably. I don't know that, but that's <laughs> oh, what I would guess definitely. and hope. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe anything I read these days, yeah. except for your stuff, of course, and ours. <laughs> um, being a journalist, what are you working on right now? I mean, obviously, you're out there reporting. Um, what are the top things you're looking at that you're observing? What's your observation space relative to what, uh, what, you're, what you're feeding into your reports? Um, this topic? Security, I'm going to retire and be long gone on. It's a terrific topic that means so much and connects to everything. Um, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of runway on this topic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, there's I not much. I think the whole area of, what right there, your mobile device yeah. and how it plugs yeah. into the cloud and then what that portends yeah. for Internet of Things. We have this whole 10-year mm -hmm. history of the, pe the laptops and we're not even solving that and with the servers and now we're moving here to these mobile devices and yeah. the clouds and the IoT. It just, the surf attack surface area is just yeah. continuous. Yeah. And the cameras, I mean, it's yeah. just. Uh, <laughs> the other thing I noticed on the Aetna's presentation this morning on the keynote, Jim, was uh, um, he said, a lot of times they people chase the wrong attack vector because they're not sharing. Literally waste cycle times on, on innovation. Um, Good point, so yeah. it's just interesting market. Okay, final thoughts, uh, Byron, this event. What's the significance of this event? Obviously there's Black Hat out there, the other industry events. What is so significant about CyberConnect from your perspective? Obviously, you know, our view is, you know, it's, all, it's an industry conversation, it's up-leveled a bit, but it's not, you know, it's not competing with other events. Mm -hmm. Do you see it the same way? What is your perspective on this event? Um, you know, I think uh, that uh, it's properly named Connect. And I mean, I think that is right at the center of all this when you have uh, people like uh, Jim Ralph from Etno, which is doing these fantastic things in terms of, you know, protecting their network and, and sharing that freely. And the US bank guy that was just on and Verizon is, is talking later today. They've been in this space for a long time, sharing terrific intelligence. And then somebody like the general uh, and Tom Kemp, the CEO of Centrify, talking about giving visibility to that a real key piece that's not necessarily sexy, but it, by locking that down, that's a, you know, accessing. How is the Centrify message being received in like the DC circles? I mean, obviously they're an enterprise, they're doing very well. I don't know if they're revenue numbers because they're private, they don't really report those. Um, are they well received in the DC and in the cy cyber communities in terms of what they do? I mean, I mean, it's identity obviously is a key, keys to the kingdom, but yeah. you know, it's, it used to be kind of like a fenced off area in enterprise software model. They seem to be have more relevance now. Are they that translating for them in the um, marketplace? I, you know, I would think so. I mean, the yeah. company's growing, and I think that it's just 
talking to somebody, what they, the story they have to tell is substantive and really simple. Yeah. So there are some smart people over there and I, I yeah. think uh, that there, there are friendly ears out there to hear what they have to say. Yeah, anything with identity, know your customer is a big term and you hear in blockchain and anti-money laundering and know your customer, big, big term. That's, he's seeing more of that now, certainly seeing Facebook, mm -hmm. Twitter and Alphabet in front of the Senate getting peppered. I thought that was interesting. We follow those guys pretty deeply. They got, they got hammered. I mean, they're like, what's going on? How could you let this happen? So, yeah. and not that it was national security, but it was a major FUD campaign going on on those, on those platforms. That's data, right? So it wasn't necessarily hacked per se, but uh, great stuff. Byron, thanks for joining us here in theCUBE. Appreciate it. And My your pleasure. website Anytime. is lastwatchdog.com. Yes. Okay, lastwatchdog.com. Byron Okohito here inside theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We'll be back with more live coverage after this short break. <laughs>